Let me hear Malcolm come on to deal with the issue of prisons. Um, the prison population reached a record high of 82,000 in February, um, but through huge effort by those in the service, the police uh, probation service, this increase in demand is being managed. Prisons will continue to operate at or near capacity until our program, building programme puts us in a position uh, by which supply outstrips demand. And I may say um, that over the last uh, 10 years, we've actually increased the number of prison places at twice the rate of the uh, previous period, at 2,000 uh, a year. And we're planning for a further 20,000 places, gross 16,000 net, to bring total capacity up to 96,000 by 2014. Our plans include plans for um, the so-called Titan prisons, uh, which have of late attracted some criticism. Uh, it's suggested they're going to be little more than warehouses, um, scant regard for pr providing education, health and training facilities, and that more and smaller local prisons are better. Let me address these points. A an achievement of the, of the past decade has been to make prisons far more constructive institutions. And they continue to be so, in spite of current pressures, by investing great amounts in rehabilitation, drug treatment, training and education. Rehabilitation is obviously integral to the purpose of prison. Um, and we continue to, to look at ways in which we can improve the effectiveness of courses available and new ways of helping those inside turn around their lives on the outside. The building of these large prisons, and with it the closure of older and more inefficient parts of the estate, will allow us to take the best examples of what we know works from around the country and put it into practice. We will be able then to combine the best aspects of smaller prisons with the efficiencies of having several units in one location sharing improved facilities. And we'll be locating those prisoners so that prisoners are much closer to home. We have to recognise the interests of the taxpayer. It just happens to be true, I wish it weren't, uh, that uh, building a single large establishment uh, is less expensive than building an equivalent number of of smaller establishments, of three or four uh, smaller establishments, because you can produce big, as it were, back office uh, savings, and you can also uh, get uh, improved central facilities, for example, in catering and healthcare and much else uh, besides. But there's an added problem uh, from those who say, just build a lot of small prisons, is that trying to get planning permission for a small prison arouses no less a local concern than getting planning permission for a big prison on the whole, right? People don't like prisons at the end of their streets. They also, however, when they've got a prison at the end of their street, they don't want it to be closed. Uh, and I got a survey done when I was Home Secretary, just for those who want to know, showing that, that uh, if you have a prison down the end of your street, it has no uh, deleterious effect on house prices. In fact, there was a marginal evidence, well, it's an important factor, uh, uh, marginal evidence that actually house prices went up because actually people turn out paradoxically to feel quite safe in, in the... <laughs> And so they should in the vicinity of the prison. And the other provider of reassurance, I say, is that touch wood, touch wood, um, um, the, the um, number of uh, escapes uh, from prison has fallen uh, quite uh, significantly. Indeed, as I was announced to the House of Commons, to a slight surprise, Conservative Member of Parliament the other day, um, there were fewer escapes uh, in 2006 the whole of the year than they were in one week uh, in uh, 1992. Uh, <laughs> so you know things have got better, <laughs> except if you're uh, a prisoner uh, <laughs> wanting to escape. Now, where, I've got, where, where, where have I got to? Sorry, anyway, I'm just... <laughs> anyway, um, I was just explaining about um, uh, Titans uh, and things like that. But, but so, I mean, I'm aware of the concerns about this. I, I, I just... If, if, people, if people can come up with, in, in place of three building sites and three sets of planning permissions, they can come up with 18 uh, smaller sites with 18 uh, sets of planning permissions uh, for the same cost, uh, I'll go snap. Uh, that's the challenge uh, to everybody. We're all on the same side here, but it's, we've got to be practical uh, about this. Now, let me come here to, on, on, onto the issue of, of education. We all know, especially people here, if prison is to work in the interest of the community, it needs to help deal with the problems which lead to reoffending. We know that most offenders have low levels of literacy and numeracy. I had a great letter about six months ago uh, from a guy in Preston Prison. He said, Mr. Stroy said, you don't have to worry about me. I'm a, 
I'm a rogue, he said. Right? I've chosen my, uh, my life. He said, don't worry about me. And anyway, he said, I can read all right. He said, but I'll tell you, if you want to do one thing about most of the criminals in Preston Prison, he said, get them to read and write. And it be, be illustrated very graphically um, the issue. And they do. It's, 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 it's pathetic when you see the levels of education and training uh, of many people uh, in prison. And of course, many of those are also serious drug users. I'm therefore really delighted that the RSA is today launching the Prison Learning Network work, improving the skills and educational attainment of offenders is essential for reducing reoffending. And I'm particularly pleased that the RSA is working with prison governors, because I know uh, that of the importance and, the, and, and the, the difference that good governors uh, can make on the regime in a prison. And I also just add this, if I may, I made one little gentle sideswipe at the Conservatives, I might, have a, might as well have another, um, uh, which is, uh, I'm really pleased to hear that Conservatives are, have now got plans for what they call a rehabilitation revolution, because um, I'm glad that they've now uh, seen the light, um, and that they now see prisons as more than punitive institutions, um, which breed little but resentment. And for those of you, and one of the most astonishing things that the last administration did which I still gasp about when I think about it, is that the fact that they abolished training for probation officers. Um, I mean, there are many things you sort of disagree with your opponents about, but you can understand why they do it. But anyway, abolishing training for probation officers always struck me as being, telling it all uh, about the, the, the kind of dead-end approach uh, of our predecessors. And I hope very much, now that I have seen the light, uh, that they will join with us in having a rational and sensible debate about how best the penal system can serve the interests of the public. Because... An essential part of that, not being soft to be concerned about reoffending, is actually being firm and tough if you not only punish the offender but also do more and more to get them off offending in the future. A related issue to education is work. Uh, we've done a lot uh, to um, expand the opportunities for constructive work in prisons. It's moving away from you know, textiles simply for the inside of the prison service to skills which can be used outside. Um, we've got an alliance with 70 employers, and David Hanson, the prisons minister, is chairing a forum, forum of leading figures from business and the third sector to see how we can better bring in more partners uh, to provide even more opportunities for training. And on top of this, we had a really significant increase in money available for uh, drug treatment with more uh, drug wings. But we've also got to get across that access to enhanced training and education in prison is not simply a handout, a free good for the prisoners. It's got to be earned. Um, and so... David Hansen has developed this really imaginative idea of a new contract with prisoners. It's to turn... The idea behind this contract is to balance the opportunities we give to offenders to turn away from the life of crime with what the community is going to expect on them. And that means meeting certain standards of behaviour whilst in prison and on relief. Getting off and staying off drugs, for example. It also means giving the community a greater role in setting out what it expects of those offenders offenders who are given the chance to repay their debt to society. There'll be incentives for those who take the chances offered to them, as well as uh, penalties for those uh, who uh, do not. Now, I, I mentioned costs uh, a moment ago, um, and the cost of prison is, is high. It's £37,000 a year uh, per prisoner. So the taxpayer's going to ask, what's in it for me? The first answer is that the prison works to keep the public safe at the time, but it also has to do it um, to reduce reoffending. But second, the prison should itself become a constructive part of the community. In other words, it can work for everyone. First and foremost, for the law-abiding, tax-paying majority, but also for those offenders who take the opportunities available to turn away from crime. Now, many prisons already recognise the, that they have an influence that goes beyond the prison gates. There is actually a reason why, if you try and close a prison, uh, the community says they don't want it closed because it actually has imperceptibly become part of the community. They're not just local employers, they're a focus for much charitable work and for volunteering. But I believe that prisons can and should play an even more active role in helping uh, to build community confidence in the justice system. Give me an example. One prison has been running a scheme by which the hours of prison work clocked up contribute to a community-wide time bank. This time bank is essentially a store of pledged hours of volunteering. 
And in this way, work done in prison, for example, in Gloucester Prison, this is repairing bicycles to be sent to developing countries, can benefit uh, the local community. An hour's work inside the prison can mean a lift to the shops for an elderly person on the outside, or hospital visit, or time spent by volunteers to clean up the local park. In a sense, a kind of implicit contract between volunteers on the outside and the prisoners on the inside. And what's, I think, attractive about this scheme is the potential for prisoners to make reparations to the victim and the community. Easily done as part of community punishment, obviously less so where the sentence is custodial. But I'm asking my officials at the Ministry of Justice to look at ways in which we can develop these time bank uh, schemes uh, and also we can extend it so that work skills and training in prison translates into volunteering time which can be access accessed directly by uh, the victims. More widely, I'd like to see prison governors strengthening links with local employers, with voluntary organisations, schools and community uh, groups and becoming a more visible local presence. 